Amen. God is good. Amen. Yes, yes. It is truly a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And good to see each and every one of you. And God has truly been good to us, to all the sinners and all the saints. Amen. 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 You know, we, we all fall short of the glory of God, but a saint is someone that's saved. And uh, all those sin may come, but he's saved, a sinner saved by grace. Those that are sinners are still lost. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, um, again, I'd like to thank each and every one of you. I'm, I'm, I'm joyous this morning. I'm able to be in here and relax, have a lot of help this morning. So, praise God. Amen. Yeah, praise God. Kyle's taking control of the pool pit for me. Brother Deacon Jones is uh, doing his duty. And Sister Jones running the sound. So, it is a blessing to have help. The Bible tells us that the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Amen. So again, good morning to each of you on social media, on via Zoom. It's another blessed day that the Lord has allowed you and I to lay our eyes upon. And God has truly been good to us. No matter how bad it may be, God has been good to us. You know, if you are a believer, if you are a person of faith, you know that no matter how bad, how uh, good, how bad, or how worse it can get, guess what? We know that it's going to be good because... The Bible tells us that all things work together for the good to those who are called according to his purpose. Yeah. Now watch this. It doesn't say that it's going to always be good. But it says that all things work together for the good. The good and the bad work together for the good. So that tells me that there will be some bad times, right? There will be some storms that seem to be unbearable. There will be some horrible times. There will be some devastating times. There will be some storms that you go, there will be some trials and tribulations that you have to face that you think, I can't see no way out. Yes. But guess what? It all works together for the good as you are being chosen by God. Yes. You see, in life we are faced with different seasons. The Bible tells us that there's a, 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 a different season that come amongst us. We have some time to, to, to plant and there's a time to pluck up that which is planted. There's a time for hate. There's a time for love. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to dance. There are different seasons that we must face in our life. But we know that it all works together for the good. You see, things get thrown in a gumbo pot. <laughs> and you got to stir it up a little bit and get the season and let it marinate. But guess what? It all works together for the good. Your seasons, your good times, and your bad times, they come together for your good. Amen. So this morning I know that the world is faced with a lot of despair and a lot of agony, a lot of betrayal, a lot of frustrations and everything of what took place on Wednesday at this Capitol. Trumpites. <laughs> we see something that we would never have thought we would see at the Capitol, right? But guess what? We're not surprised. We seen it. We wouldn't have thought we seen it, but that but that, that that it happened. We're not surprised on what took place at the Capitol. Yeah. You know, and as I looked at CNN and seeing all the people climbing the walls and all the things going on, you know, I couldn't help but uh, have to. Well, I couldn't help but hear a message from the Lord dealing with leadership today. Dealing with leadership today, and this morning I'd like to turn your attention to. The first book, the, the uh, first Samuel chapter eight, verses four through nine, and we're going to go to First Samuel chapter sixteen, verse eleven and twelve. Again, First Samuel chapter eight, verses nine, verses four through nine, and chapter sixteen, verse eleven and twelve. The scripture reading. It says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord hearkened unto Samuel. He hearkened unto the voice of the people. And all that they say, he said, do. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me. 
that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods. So do they ask, or do they also unto me? Verse 9 it says, Now therefore hearken unto their voices, how be it yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king they shall reign over. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and will of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said to Samuel, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Again, we'll be dealing with 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 4 through 9, and chapter 16, verse 11 and 12. And for the title of the message this morning, I'd like to speak to you from, it's called, the look of a leader. The look of a leader. Now, when you talk about the look of a leader, I'm not talking about the outside appearance of a leader. The leadership is not about what's on the outside. It's not about the appearance of yes. a leader. Yes. It's not about the appearance of what a person has. Yes. It's not about the financial status of a person is not about their physical attributes, yes. but it's about what's on the inside of the leader that makes him or her a leader. Mm -hmm. Someone that's in leadership position has to have leadership attributes, right? Yeah. A leader should be able to have great character. Mm -hmm. A leader is one to be able to delegate responsibilities without having to micromanage. Oh, a leader is Someone that's able to make those around him better. He's able to develop them. Yes. A leader is one that's able to admit when they're wrong. A leader should be fearless. He should have great humility. Mm -hmm. A leader uh, uh, should care for the people who he's leading. A leader is able to show respect. And a leader should be able to take wise counsel. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus once said that in order to be a great leader, you first have to be able to serve. He said that he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. Let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, let him be of servanthood. For whosoever wants to become great among you, he must serve. Mm -hmm. yes. Solomon tells us that leadership it, it, that leadership uh, uh, is a knowledge is able to take in knowledge. He's teachable. He's teachable and able to take in from others. It says that, uh, 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 he said, knowledge is easy for one who understands. And why is that? Because he's able to listen. He's able to be teachable. He's able to be vulnerable. That's what a leader looks like. A leader should not be one of pride. He should not be one who uses position for his own well-being, but he should be able to use his position for the well-being of others. Yeah. When you look, when, when, when you are in a leadership position, the title does not make you. Yeah. The title doesn't make you. You make the title. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. The title does not make you. You are the title. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that most people that said leadership don't want to, didn't want that position? <laughs> but they got it. Why? Because that's who they are on the inside. You see, what's in you is in you. And what's for you is for you. The gift that's in you will make room for you. You are the title. You are the leader. It doesn't. No one can put you. Uh, uh, that's why we have people in leadership that shouldn't be there because others put them there when they don't have those attributes of a leader. Mm -hmm. Now, although that is to be true, these, these, these leaders, these, these, those people that put them in position, they did it out of their own wants. They did it out of their own desires, and therefore we have the wrong person in leadership. Yeah. And again, that's because people look on the outside. 
of man instead of on the inside. They're looking at the financial status. They're looking at what that person can do. They're looking at skin color. They're looking at uh, uh, the physical attributes of how strong they may look. And, oh, he looked like a leader. He has to be a leader. But guess what? That doesn't always make you a leader. Mm -hmm. Now, watch it. When you give a person in power that is not in leadership, whether he's a leader or not, but when you give a person power... What's on the inside of that person will manifest itself. Yeah. It will start to show out on the inside. Mm -hmm. And this morning we're dealing with 1 Samuel chapter 8. Uh, uh, we're going to see differences between two types of leaders. Go ahead. One type is the people wanted a leader. And they had desire to put someone in position. And the other one was a leader that was chosen by God because he had the attributes of a leader. Our first set of scripture picks up at 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4, and it says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel. And they said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thou sons walk not the way that you walk. Now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. Now let me stop right there. He said, your sons do not walk the way that you walk. They're not walking, following God. You see, Samuel was a prophet. And he had these two sons that wasn't following the way that he was walking. And so they said, make us a leader, but not your kids. Make us a king like other nations. They wasn't fit for leadership. And so their first mistake with the people made was saying, make us a king like other nations. They wanted to be like other people. They wanted to do what other people, they wanted to have what other people had. And you see, that's somewhat of a problem with the church today. Sometimes in the church, people are putting people in position, yeah. putting people in pastor roles or whatever it may be because it's their friend or it's their family or of a physical attribute or whatever it may be. I want you to lead, but that ain't who God chose. Yes. Mm -hmm. These people wanted a man to lead when it was God that was their ultimate leader. That was a slap in the face as God has been leading the children of Israel from, from place to place. And here it is. They come to a place and say, we want a leader like everybody else. Yeah. Although God had been taken and took them out of slavery and everything, they, they wanted a leader that could be like other people. because they, so, so their motives was in the wrong place. They didn't want one to follow. They didn't, they didn't want to follow behind God leadership. They wanted a man that they could physically touch. They wanted a man that they could physically see. Yeah. They wanted the order of man instead of the order of God. They wanted someone amongst them that will judge them as God judges wasn't good enough. But watch this. They wasn't worried about it when God was judging and bringing them out of, the, out of Egypt. Right. God's judgment brought them out of Egypt and split the Red Sea while they walked across on dry land. God guided them in the day by uh, uh, a cloud and guided them at night by fire. They wasn't worried about it then when he was taking them to say pasture. God was fighting and defeating nations on their behalf. It was God's judgment that delivered them from their enemies. But yet still now you don't want God to lead you anymore. You want a man in a position like other nations. <laughs> I'm talking about after 430 years of slavery God led them across the Red Sea. He guided them to the promised land when they was hungry God fed them. Mm -hmm. When they were thirsty, God gave them something to drink. Mm -hmm. When they were faced with the adversary, God defeated those countries that was after them. When they were, they were faced with trouble on every side, but God showed up every time. And now, you have the nerve to say, we're done. We want what other people have. We want a leader in position. They, that, that's the term where we get keeping up with the Joneses. Well, guess what? Keeping up with the Joneses will have you go broke. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keeping up with the Joneses can become very expensive. Keeping up with the Joneses can have you lose everything you own. Keeping up with the Joneses can put you in a world of trouble. Mm -hmm. And that's where the children of Israel was headed. They was headed toward the world of trouble because they wanted to keep up with the Joneses. You better be careful what you ask for because they said, Samuel, give us a king. Like everyone else. And you know what? Samuel went to God. Samuel went to God and prayed to God and, and, and told God the request of what the people was making. And when he went over there, God told him, he said, well, hearken unto the people. Listen to what they say. 
Better yet, he said, make sure you tell them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Tell them exactly how he's going to do. But just tell them this too. I'm not going to reign over them anymore. I'm not going to be in there. I'm not going to be their king anymore. I'm not going to watch over them. They're on their own. They want a leader. I'm going to let them have a leader. And Samuel went to the people and told them all about this king that was going to reign over them. He told them how this man was going to uh, uh, be a man of selfishness. He was going to selfishness. He was going to look out for himself. He's the type of man that everything you own will become his. Samuel told him exactly how this king would be. He said he will take your sons and make them serve with chariots and horses. And they will run in front of his horses. And he says, uh, that's his horses. He's going to have them run and, and carry him around. But y'all want a king? And Samuel telling them all the stuff that's going to happen. He's going to have your people like they're in slavery. He's going to have them transport him from destination to destination. Yeah. And some of them he will assign to be commanders of thousands. Some of them I'm going to have them in charge of. Uh, 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 50 and others he said I'm going to have them plow the ground and reap in my harvest that don't sound like a good leadership that don't sound, you, you basically put me to work, you're basically going to have some slaves, he will have others he said making weapons of war and equipment for his chariots and what about his daughters, he said for all your daughters, the females, they're going to be uh, 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 making perfume and cooks and bakers, he will take the best of your field, this is a whole He will take a tent of all your grain. Yeah. Everything that you bring for I want a tent of it. Of all your grain of your vintage, and he will give it to his officials. And it didn't stop there. Samuel went on and on and was telling them your male and female service and the best of your cattle and your donkeys, he's going to take for his own use. Uh -huh. Everything you own is not yours anymore. He will take a tenth of your whole flock. And you yourself will become his slaves. But you want a king. You want a leader. And when that day came, he said, when that day come and you cry out to the Lord, I'm not going to hear you. I'm not going to listen. Because you wanted what you wanted. So you better be careful with what you asked for. And Samuel went to the people as God said. When God told him, listen to the people. Samuel went to the people. And Samuel told them exactly what God said this man will be. And guess how the people responded? Yeah, they still mm -hmm. The people refused. Mm -hmm. Although they seen all the writing on the wall, they heard the prophet of God tell them exactly how this man will be. But they wanted what they wanted and they replied to Samuel and said, no, <laughs> we refuse to listen. We want a king to be over us and then we will be like other nations with a king to lead us and go out before us and fight our battles. What happened to God fight your battles? I want a, uh, you want a man in position instead of God fight your battles that have brought you from a long, a mighty long way, but now you want this man to step in place. Mm -hmm. After all that he's going to do, you know how it is, you want something so bad that you keep asking for it and you keep asking and then God gives it to you and he show you exactly why I was keeping it from you. Mm -hmm. I've been keeping you from all the devastation. I've been keeping you from this that was coming, but you wanted it, so you got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the look of a leader. Although they seen it right on the wall, they heard the prophet of God tell them exactly how this man would be. And they still refused. They still refused. You want to fight your battles? You want a man to fight your battle instead of God? That's not a pretty wise choice. <laughs> man, man will fail you. See, man is temporary. Man have mistakes. Man have flaws, right? Yeah. You can have God. You have God that been leading you who's no flaw in him, who's permanent, who's not temporary, but you want to exchange the power of God for man. So Samuel went out there, and God led Samuel to such a man named Saul. And Samuel brought forth Saul to the children of Israel, of whom God had chosen. And they ran to him, and seeing that he was of tall stature. They seen that he was built, that he looks like a king. He was higher than any other people from his soul, shoulders and up. And the people shouted and said, God, save the king. 
You see, they were looking on the wrong things. They, even though they heard about how he was, when they seen Saul, they said he looks like a king. He looked like he could be the one that leads us. And they went on to Saul, and they, and they said, God, save us the king. And, 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 and you see, Saul did exactly what Samuel had told the people he would do. Saul was self-centered. Saul was egotistical. He was a man of pride. Uh, a man that he took advantage of his power for his own benefits. I'm going to have you do this. I'm going to have you do that. So see, when you give a man power, it will show what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. He was about me, myself, and I. God would uh, give Saul a command and he would do the opposite. God would tell Saul that I won't go and speak this country and, and, and kill the king and take all the spoil and, and burn it and everything, right? But when Saul gets there, he spares the king and he keeps the thing for his own benefits. But this is the leader that you wanted to lead your people. This is the leader that you wanted to lead you guys, right? So I'm giving you exactly what you wanted. And when you go out, I won't be with you. You wanted a leader? You got it. Sounds familiar? <laughs> Sounds familiar? We are still dealing with this type of leadership today in our country. Mm -hmm. We are still dealing with this type of leadership today in our country. Our leaders in the country show forth the lack of leadership attributes. And like the story of Saul, the writing was on the wall since the beginning. We've seen this happening before it happened. The writing was on the wall. Before, this, before America voted, guess what? We already seen, I remember when I first seen this happening when the man was running for office, I couldn't believe that he, I had no, uh, uh, no reason to think that he would win. I thought that that's a joke. This is a businessman. I thought that uh, uh, I just had no reason to believe that he would win. And when he won, it was such a shock. <laughs> I thought it was a joke, but he won. But all the writings was on the wall. Mm -hmm. And after seeing what took place on Wednesday, I see that there's people out there that thinks just like him. There are people out there that really supports this man as leader. Yes. It was. I, I thought that it was uh, 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 something that was paid for. I thought, he, I thought it was a gimmick of how he got in office, but guess what? There's people out there that really supports and really voted for him for this position. Mm -hmm. And me as a, 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 a black man, I just couldn't help but think about how many lives would have been taken had it been blacks. <laughs> how many lives would have been lost had it been blacks? There would have been a massacre in that place. The capital would have been bloodshed. It was, but, but, and, and still, today we lost five people. Five people on behalf of leadership. All this stuff could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. All of this would have been avoided, but because someone lost, they're, now they're accusing the other of cheating. Mm -hmm. And rallied up all these people to go down to this place and march, and all this devastation come occur. We're talking about the look of a leader. I couldn't believe what was going on, but again, it's no surprise. I mean, we had officials out there waving people to come in. They had nooses out there showing their a Confederate flags running around in the Capitol, all this kind of stuff. What type of leadership are our people being led by? Mm -hmm. But you wanted him, and you got him. Mm -hmm. And you see, although, uh, uh, although people are in position, it's still God that's in power. God is the one that ordains the position. And sometimes God will put people, put, put people in position just to show you, just to show you how wrong you were. Sometimes God will put people in position to get you to turn from your wicked ways. The truth of the Israel was dealing with this all the time. God will go ahead and let them be in captivity to show them to turn from your wicked ways. All we as children of God, we have to do, we have to pray for the leadership of the country. We have to continue to pray. Because it's God that ordains the office. God chooses this for you to be in office. And as a child of God, we are called to pray for those in power. Remember what's in that man will be manifested when ignited by the power, by the position. And God will use things to chastise. The Bible tells us that God said that uh, 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 if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and pray, then shall I heal their land. Mm -hmm. I got 
to get your undivided attention. And you turn from your wicked way, then shall I heal your land. And then the story of Saul, Saul as a king, the king, the one that they wanted to put in position, they couldn't get rid of him. Saul was there for 42 years leading the children of Israel. God was getting ready to strip his title. After 42 years, they had this man that was egotistical, man of pride, man that was selfish, wanted what he wanted, and a man that took advantage of his power for his own benefit. They had this type of leader in the office. Why? Because they chose, they wanted a leader just like other nations. 42 years. Can you imagine having our leadership today for 42 more years? Thank God that our term over here is only four-year terms and we able to vote and remove. But can you imagine 42 years? The children of Israel had to go through that 42 years with Saul leading them as king. But God always had a ram in the bush. The next king after Saul will be chosen of God. And we're going to see the difference. The man, this man was chosen by God. God chose a man after his own heart. This man was None other than David. When the kingship was stripped by Saul, from Saul, God already was preparing another king. God had called Samuel to go to Bethlehem and inquire of Jesse's son. And he said, I have a king up there who's after my own heart that I'm going to, uh, uh, that I'm going to anoint to be king. And Samuel goes up to Bethlehem. And Samuel goes over to Jesse to see his sons. And he said, bring forth your son because God has chosen one of them to be king. And Samuel brought forth seven of his sons. And one of the sons, when he first seen him, he said, that has to be him. He must be the king. He's built like a king. He got to be the king. And God said, that's not him. And Samuel will go through this all, all through seven of Jesse's kids. And none of those seven was the king that God had chosen. You see, the Lord doesn't look at the stature of your height. The Lord doesn't look at your financial stability. The Lord doesn't look at your physical side. He not, he's not worried about the color of your skin. But the Lord looks on what's on the inside of your heart. And if, and, and if what's on the inside that will show up on the outside. The Lord knows what's on the inside. He knows who's the leader. He knows who should be king because you have those attributes. You have those characters that's in you. So God has said, I have a man that's after my own heart. But when Samuel went through all his sons, he said, no, it has to be another one because the God I serve does not make a mistake. And so he said, it got to be another one. And Jesse said, oh, yeah, I have another son outside. And he's actually out there keeping watch over the sheep. He said he's a pretty boy. He's reddish in skin and he's a young man. He's a, a teenager. He's out there keeping watch over the sheep. And Samuel said, send him to me. And when David came out, the Lord told Samuel, arise, anoint him. It is he. Hmm. David wasn't a man physically. I mean, a, a, a man that was strong physically. He was a teenager. David wasn't a man of high stature with big shoulders. He was an average man. David was the youngest of his brothers. But yet God said, I want you to anoint him to be king. Why is that? Because he had the character of leadership. David was seeking to be, David wasn't seeking to be king. He was outside keeping watch over the sheep. But yet God chose David and said, he is a man after my own heart. David was a young boy when he was anointed to be king of Israel. But David had the attributes of leadership running through his veins. He was fearless. He was a, a, a man that was humble. And, and he was a man that made those around him better. And most importantly, David was a man of God. So he already had the characteristics of what leadership looks like. He was out there keeping watch over the sheep. You see, a sheep, a, a, a shepherd is one that protects the flock. That's what a leader should do. A leader should be one to protect the flock. David was a young man already protecting the shop. I mean, protecting the sheep. So what better man for God to choose as his under shepherd for his people than one that's already a shepherd by trait? I'm telling you, you don't choose the title. The title chooses you. Your gift that's in you will make room for you. David may not look like a king on the outside, 
But on the inside, inwardly, he was a perfect match of what leaders look like. And God chose him to be king after Saul to lead his people. Because he had the attributes of what a king looked like on the inside. And when he became the leader, that, that's on the inside, manifested itself on the outside. David said one time when his sheep was out, he knew that God was with him. And when his sheep was out, a lion came and attacked his sheep. And a bear came and attacked his sheep. And David went out there and killed the lion and the bear. When Goliath came up against the children of Israel, when the Philistines came, David was a young boy. And David went out there and said, the Lord is with us. And he went out there and protected the children of Israel even before he was anointed king. Even before he was a king of Israel, he already had the attributes in him, the care of the people. Hmm. Saul so, so was worried about me, myself, and I. David was worried about you first, in him? That's a shepherd. Jesus talked about the good shepherd. He said, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the one that was going to lay down my life for the sheep. That's the good shepherd. But you have some shepherds that's in position, that's paid for a position, and when trouble comes, guess who's going to be the first to run? That sheep, that shepherd. He's going to be the first to warn and make sure he runs for cover. Now, the other day, I, I, I heard something. I heard that uh, uh, our president was saying that he was going to go and march with the people, but I don't believe none of us seen him down there. <laughs> We're talking about the look of a leader. He's going to look out for the well-being of the people he's leading. Mm -hmm. The look of a shepherd. David was already doing so, and God chose him to lead his people. But David would not be able to lead the children of Israel forever. And nor would any other king that come behind David would be able to lead the children of Israel forever. Why is that? Because men have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. We all got a time to go. It's appointed unto man once to die. We all have a destination. We all have to go when we leave this place. And because of that, God had sent forth another king that came out of the lineage of David. Isn't that amazing? He sent another king out of the lineage of David. And he said that this king is going to be born of a virgin birth. Mm -hmm. It was prophesied that he would come out of the stem of Jesse, who was David's father. And that he did. It was prophesied that the king would be born of a virgin birth. And that he was. It was prophesied that he would be the, uh, that he would be the Messiah. And that he would come into this world for the redemption of all men's sins. And that he did. This is none other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the Alpha and he's the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And, and, and he thought enough about you and I to humble himself and take off his robe of glory. And come down here in the flesh of man for yours and my sin. He was a humble servant. Well, I shouldn't say was because he is a humble servant. Jesus didn't come to serve, but he came. He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. Mm -hmm. That's the trait of a leader. Jesus came amongst the land and chose 12 disciples. He chose some that was tax collectors. Mm -hmm. He chose them while they was out there fishing. He, he, even had the, he even had Judas as one of his disciples. But Jesus chose 12 disciples and he started working on them, making them become better men. He made them become fishers of men. That's a trait of a leader. When all around him would uh, uh, be in need of counsel, Jesus would take time and listen to them, and he would teach them. That's the trait of a leader. When those around Jesus was in trouble, when they was in danger, I remember there was a storm on a ship, and the people were panicking, and they were like, what is going on? And they went, woke up Jesus. And Jesus came out and said, peace be still. And the storm stopped. You see, when your, when your clock is in trouble, the shepherd is going to come and protect. That's the trait of a leader. Those around Jesus were made better as a result of being in his presence. And that's the trait of a leader. Mm -hmm. Another thing about a leadership is that when that leader is out, when that leader is gone, when the leader is no longer here, guess what? The impact he has on your life will still be present in you today. Yeah. Because see, those that follow leadership, you start taking on the characteristic of the leader. Look how disrespectful the people was the other day. They're following the, the, the characteristic of the leader. Right, right. So when a, when a, when a leader touches you, 
He ought to put an impact on you that lasts forever, even though he's here or even though he's not here. So those that Jesus touched, their life was never the same. And although he died and rose and left this place, they still was impacted by the touch of Jesus. They still was impacted by Jesus being in their life because he was that type of leader. That's what leadership looks like. And although Jesus may not be walking this earth today physically, He's walking this earth spiritually. Yes, he he's dwelling in each and every one of us that call, that, that are children of him, that accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. He's walking inside of you. He's touching you right now. You may not see him physically, but he's walking inside you. Yeah. He's walking inside you spiritually. He's in the inside. The Bible says that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He dwells inside of us, leading us day by day. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he's leaving an impact on your life. But if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then you're out here without the right leader. Mm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you want such a leader in your life that's able to make you better, that's able to change your life, that's able to keep you from danger, he's able to keep you from falling. You got to give your life to Christ. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me besides the still water. He restores my soul. He leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table in the presence of my enemy, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. I pray that you take heed to the look of a leader. Choose Jesus as your leader of your life. And he'll impact your life and change your life. Amen. God bless you.